Hello everyone, it is Mike here and welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Review. I gotta say, um, let me go through the Guardians timeline here, not counting the Avengers because they are a part of that. Um, I do like number one a lot. It is one of my favorites. I've always remembered how much I enjoyed number one because it was the first time I drove to the movie theaters. Like, drove. Like, drove to... I remember I, I told everyone I'm going to get my license, and the first thing I'm going to do is drive to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's what I did. So I always remember that that time. It was a long time ago. That I think it was in... I don't know when the first one came out, but it's almost nearly 10 years ago. But anyway, um, back to it. Uh, and I really enjoyed number one. I thought number one was fantastic and a great movie. It's probably my top ten Marvel films. And then number two came out. Ugh, one of my least favorite Marvel films. I don't like number two. I'm not a big Yondu fan. Um, and what they did with the main villain was just atrocious. Ego is one of the worst villains ever. And, oh, he's Peter Quill's dad and all this. I don't care. Okay? It was terrible. There was some really good humor in number two. Um, of course, Drax always brings his A game. He is definitely the funniest one of the group, if I had to pick. They're all funny, though. Um, but then, now we got number three. And this is the last one, maybe, I think, uh, that we're going to get. And I am going to go to no spoilers right now. Um, I will warn you when I do spoilers, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do not, no spoilers for right now if you haven't seen it. So what do I think about this movie? It's probably the best one. Uh, it's one of the best Marvel films. It's probably the best movie of the year. It's fantastic. Start to finish. Fantastic. There's a couple gripes I have, and I'll probably get into them with the spoilers, um, because I, I definitely got to do a little bit of a spoiler review at the end. But I'm going to give you a warning before I do it. But going to no spoilers. Uh, this movie is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. The story is excellent. You're going to get Rocket Raccoon backstory. Excellent. All these characters. I'm not a big fan of Mantis. Uh, she's alright. But even I think she's fine in this one. But the rest of them... Excellent. Character developments, just great. I know Gamora's not the same because of the events of Endgame, but she's fantastic. Drax is always fun. Nebula's one of my favorites. I love Nebula. I love that character. I always like the serious characters that are surrounded by idiots. Those are some of my favorite characters. Um, but the humor in it is perfect. The action, perfect. And this movie's really dark. And that's what you need. We don't need these goofy comedies like Thor Ragnarok and Goofy Ant-Man and Quantumania. Um, we need movies like this. This was just excellent from start to finish. It was paced perfect. James Gunn is a mastermind. And he did really good with the Suicide Squad too. He did the second one. And um, you could tell that there's stuff, it's ran just like that one. Because it was just perfect. And even though this is not rated R, um, it definitely had some very humorous moments and some really dark ones as well. And some really sad moments also um, throughout the movie that really, you know, went for your heart. Um, what else can I say? A score, fantastic. Uh, that's never been a problem with this. And the action was just... Uh, Great. I will say this. Um, most of the time, especially in Quantumania, uh, we have these side characters, and Star Wars is doing this, and Marvel's doing this, but we have these side characters who are absolutely goofy. Just don't belong here. Terrible. Don't make any sense. Just cringe side characters that, you know, walk around like different aliens. Star Wars has been doing it a lot lately. And Marvel's Marvel did it a lot in Quantumania. They did it a lot in Ragnarok. Um, I will say this. This movie, all these 
what you would say are goofy characters that are side characters are absolutely amazing. Didn't have a problem with one of these creatures. I thought they were cool. I don't want to give away some of the creature designs, but I thought they were so fun to watch. And there was so many great scenes, fight scenes, because of how the creatures were designed. Especially the bad guys. Henchmen were crazy looking. I mean, it was pretty awesome. And we d we definitely got to talk about the bad guy. The evolutionary... I don't know that actor's name. Dude, dude kills it. And he's great in Peacemaker. He could play a really great villain, this guy. Um... I don't know his name. I should have looked that up before the review, but just forget it. But I got to give that guy some credit. He is one of the best Marvel villains. Um, he's still not in my like top five, but he's definitely, dude, he is really a messed up person. And there's one scene in particular that I thought was crazy that he, some of the stuff he did. Very menacing, very intimidating, ruthless, just a maniac. Um, and against the Guardians, man, and especially with his past with Rocket Raccoon, um, which I'm not going to get into all that, but uh, until we get to spoilers. But I got to say, he was he was pretty frightening, and he had some really good lines as a villain, and you know, just everything was perfect about him. Did a really good job. Hats off to that guy. Um, and he should be in more things. He was in Peacemaker, so it seems like he. He kind of works with James Gunn, and he's one of those James Gunn's guys. So, definitely was great in this movie. Um, just everyone. Everyone did a great job. Drax was hilarious. Batista is just, he gets better and better. Um, he's always fun. Uh, he's had some really funny lines. Even Mantis, who is my least favorite of the Guardians, had some really funny lines. And I thought all of them really brought their A game. I thought if I had to choose the weakest link, it was probably, well, probably, no. I mean, there's not really a weak link here. I'm, you know, if I had to choose, Mantis is always going to be my weak link. But um, they were all excellent. Love Nebula. Nebula's hardcore. Love the fact that she can, like, break her arms and then put them back together. She's awesome. I don't know what it is with me and blue women, but I love blue women. I love... Nebula, and I love Mystique. They are my favorite blue women ever. I love blue women. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> back to it. Uh, so I am going to give... Oh man, how, how am I going to rank this? I'm, I'm going 93. I'm going high on this. 93 out of 100. If I had to complain a little bit, there was a couple things that I thought they kind of rushed a little bit. Uh, but I mean... Yeah. We'll go 94. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more. I'm going to do one more. 94. 94. So we'll do a 94 out of 100. Uh, there, was, there was a couple things I wish I, I, wish I could have saw that they didn't do. Um, I, and I'll go into that in the spoilers. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty awesome. Um, and really the stuff that... The only reason I give it a 94... I mean, it's almost a perfect movie. The only reason I give it a 94 is because there's other ones that I enjoy more, like Infinity War and uh, uh, Endgame. And, uh, you know, it's not the best one, but it's definitely in, I'd probably put it in top 10 easily on MCU and maybe top 5. I would have to go through all the list again because there's so many movies. Um, I don't know. This is probably the best one since Endgame. I, I think it's better than No Way Home. Uh, it's a toss up there. I don't know. But I uh, besides No Way Home or whichever one the third one is, I always get Far From Home. There's Far From Home is the second one. I always get those confused. Um But besides that one, it's the best one since Endgame. Hands down. Not even debatable. Okay, so now we are going to spoilers. Spoilers, you have been warned. Spoilers. Okay, this was just an emotional ride with Rocket Raccoon. You get to see how he was tortured, how he lost his friends, um, and how the evolutionary is just completely ruthless. Um, one of the biggest, 
I mean, there's so many great scenes. I don't know where to start. Um, oh, and don't even forget Adam Warlock. It was I thought he did well. I thought the guy did well. Um, uh, and hopefully they do more with that character. I'm sure they're going to. But one of the things that I wanted to see, and maybe, and I thought James Gunn was going to give us this. I was almost certain he was going to give us this. And with the casting, I thought we were definitely going to get this. And I wanted to see one of the Guardians kick the bucket. And that sounds horrible, I know, but, you know, I feel like it should have went that way. And that's why it got a 90, that's one of the reasons why it got a 94. Um, because I was intending on it to happen, and it does tease that Star-Lord is going to die, but um, he doesn't, so... Um, but anyway, I thought it would have been cool if one of them kicked the bucket. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like when you're going up against someone like the Evolutionary, you need someone to sacrifice it all in the end. Just like Endgame. That's why Endgame is so great. I, I feel like in all of these types of movies, whether it be Lord of the Rings, whether it be um, Marvel, Star Wars, you always need a character to kick the bucket. In, and it may be the one that saves everyone in the end. Um, it could be, you know, someone that, you know, pulls someone in and then gets left behind. Any of those situations, um, I think that that should have happened. And it, and it didn't. And it didn't. And I, I, I'm glad it had a happy ending. But I, I feel like, especially with, you know, Gamora and Drax being their last film, according to the people that play them. Um, I thought one of them should, should have, I think, I, I, I thought Drax should have kicked it, but whatever. It's not a big deal. I still thought it ended well and on a happy note. Um, and one of my biggest complaints, if I had to choose one besides that, because I was expecting someone to, you know, I, and I, I'll tell you, I can't stand the arrow guy. I know he, he's like James Gunn's brother or something. I don't care. I just can't. He should have kicked the bucket. That's who should have kicked the bucket. Because that's one guy. I, that's he's pro, I just don't like his character. I don't like Yondu. I don't like him. I don't like the arrow. I think it's dumb. I, I, it's just not my thing. So, um, And I, some of the scenes with him, don't like. But that's, that's nitpicking. We're nitpicking now. But my biggest complaint is... I thought the villain was really great. I thought he would stood out. He was the one of the most menacing ones. There's there's even one scene where this the whole the whole ship the whole ship basically turns on him and says pulls guns on him and says basically get out of here. You're out of control. We're taking things over. You're out of your mind. You're trying to get us all killed. His own people turn guns on him. He just obliterates them. Love that scene. Love him screaming at his own people. It's like the guy is the probably the worst boss ever he is. I mean, he is just, oh my goodness. He screams at him. You know, he obliterates anyone that disagrees with him. You know, he, he doesn't let people go to his new planet. And I love his idea of a villain as a creator. Oh my goodness. Just very menacing, but that scene in particular thought it was gold. It, it's pr you know you're a villain when everyone on your ship points a gun at you and says you're out of your mind and we're taking things over now. When your own team turns on you and wants to overthrow you as a captain, that's when you know you're a bad dude. And of course he they didn't stand a chance against him. I thought that scene was excellent. Um, I thought the whole scene, but the one complaint I did have about the villain is I felt like he should have put up a better fight at the end. I mean, we're talking like maybe 30 second fight. Come on. He definitely deserved it more than 30 seconds. That's my only issue. It's, I think that's my biggest gripe is the, that he didn't, you know, I felt like he could have put up a better fight. And I felt like he could have took one of them out, maybe. Um, or took Rocket with him. They went together or something. I thought that would have been better. But 
you know, I'm just trying to take someone's work and put it how I would want it to be. And, you know, that's not fair to the director, which did a fantastic job. Had so many great scenes in this movie. So many funny scenes. So many dark scenes. So many sad scenes. Um, but, yeah, that's... If I had to do one little gripe, it would have been... I would have wanted to see a bigger fight with the evolutionary and these people. I thought that would have been better. He felt like a very supreme villain. So I thought he could have, you know, not Thanos, but definitely put up a better fight than um, some of the other villains we've seen throughout the MCU. But that's a little gripe. Wish that fight scene was a little bit longer. Felt like some of the other ones were way longer. That And uh, yeah, he just, I thought he could have did a better fight on the end there. But that's just, that's that's it. That's it. I can't think of anything else I didn't like about the movie. Besides that. Because, I mean, you build it up so well. And then you just get that little fight at the end. I thought it could have been just a big fight. But I I have to... It, it, it couldn't have been 100. Because it wasn't perfect. But it was close to perfect. And I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm going to give it a 94 out of 100. I thought it was solid film. Solid flick. Um, I w- would go see it in the theaters. If you go see this, if you wait until it's on Disney Plus, come on. You know, and and after you watch Quantum Mania, uh, you might want to go see this to just help help your mental state. Because Quantum, I mean, we went from eating raisins to eating Papa John's here. I mean, that's what we went from. Because when I was watching Quantum Mania, I didn't eat popcorn. I ate raisins. And once I watched this, I was eating Papa John's again. So this is what I want to see MCU. This is exactly what I want to see. I know I'm not going to see it from the Marvels. No, I'm not. I'm going to give it a chance, though. I am going to give it a chance. Because, you know, I think it looks cool in parts, but I think they're going to over, it's going to be goofy. It's going to be goofy. I know it is. James Gunn is the mastermind behind here. He is the reason why DC is hiring him to fix their crap. And, uh, yeah, James Gunn's the, the real star of this movie. He is the absolute star because just how the pacing is. Pacing is perfect. Writing's perfect. Story's perfect. Characters are perfect. Even the side characters who should be goofy and ridiculous like Quantumania, they're perfect. Everything's perfect. Didn't like the final fight scene. Thought it was a little bit rushed, but besides, there's a fight scene before that. Perfect. But yeah, yeah, that involves some uh, Beastie Boys. <laughs> so it's a 94 out of 100 for me. And um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, tell me what you think about it. Did you like it? I hope you did. If you like Quantum Mania better, you might want to just leave. I'm sorry. Because there's no way that Quantum Mania could even... Quantum Mania is not even on the same stratosphere as this movie. And Quantum Mania could have been like this. But Ant Man, you know, he doesn't do nothing right. Except for the first movie. For other two are no good. But this is a 94 out of 100. Easily. And one of the best MCU films. Thank you all, and I will see you all later.